President Rodrigo Duterte made a visit to the hospital a day before his third State of the Nation address or SONA. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque confirms this, saying Duterte dropped by Cardinal Santos Medical Center in San Juan City for a checkup. Roque says, I confirmed that the president had a routine medical checkup at the Cardinal Santos Hospital tonight before rehearsing for the SONA. He spent about an hour and a half for the routine examination. He was declared to be in good health. A source tells Rappler Duterte had an X-ray and visited the cardiology department. 73-year-old Duterte has admitted to several medical conditions, including Berger's disease and Barrett's esophagus. The president often complains of daily migraines and spinal problems. Meanwhile, 69% of Filipinos say efforts to eradicate illegal drugs in the country is Duterte's most important achievement. A Pulse Asia survey conducted from June 15 to 21 shows the sentiment is highest in Metro Manila at 77% and among the rich or ABC classes at 74%. Fighting criminality comes in second at 50% nationwide. The salary increase for police and military personnel at 30% comes third. Fight against graft and corruption at 28% comes fourth. 21% said it's the grant of free tuition to students enrolled in public universities and colleges comes fifth. Efforts to create more jobs 15%, restore public trust in government and its officials 11%, improve the state of the national economy 11%, and extend the validity of driver's licenses 10% were also recognized as accomplishments. Least often mentioned were poverty reduction at 8%, inflation control at 8%, extension of the validity of passports at 7%, no deposit policy in hospitals at 6%, lowering of personal income tax at 5%, and provision of free internet in public areas at 3%. For his sauna speech, a majority says Duterte should emphasize the creation of more jobs, 56%, and the need to control the rising prices of basic commodities at 52%. Other issues that Filipinos nationwide want Duterte to emphasize during his sauna are improving or increasing the pay of workers, 48%, further reducing the poverty of many Filipinos, 33%, ending contractualization 27% and continuing the fight against illegal drugs 26%. Very few believe that he should highlight federalism at 5% and charter change at 3%. Manila Archbishop Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle cries as he asks God why the innocent die in a prayer session. Natutuwa ka ba sa kamatayan ng inosente? Nagtatanong lang po, ipagpaumanhin ninyo you don't rejoice at the death of the wicked, but there are many innocent people who are dying. We want to believe that you do not rejoice in their death too. But there are so many of them. Dear Jesus, please listen to us. Tagli delivers this reflection at a time of rising violence in the Philippines. More than 27,800 Filipinos died in both vigilante-style killings and police operations since President Rodrigo Duterte took office. Tagli ends his prayer by recounting his encounters with everyday people. He remembers a child whose parents were both killed and who promised to study hard to support their family. Tropical Depression Josie left the Philippine Area of Responsibility or PAR early Monday morning. State Weather Bureau Pag-asa says Josie is already 585 kilometers north-northeast of Basco Batanes, moving north at 20 kilometers per hour. After Josie's exit, Pag-asa continues to monitor a low-pressure area or LPA 1,495 kilometers east of Center Luzon. It could enter PAR on Monday. It also has a chance of becoming a tropical depression within the next 24 or 48 hours. If it intensifies, it would be the Philippines' 11th tropical cyclone for 2018 and would be given the local name Carding. Scattered to widespread monsoon rain will persist in the Ilocos region, Zambales, Bataan, Cavite, Batangas, Oriental Mindoro, Occidental Mindoro, Palawan, and Western Visayas. Pag-asa also issues the following color-coded rainfall warnings, Bataan and Batangas, 
orange or intense rain. Cavite and southern Zambales, yellow or heavy rain. Occidental Mindoro, orange or intense rain. And northern Palawan, red or torrential rain. The rest of Luzon and the rest of the Visayas will also continue to have occasional rain showers due to the southwest monsoon. Massive floods have hit various areas in Luzon and forced thousands of people to evacuate. Mm -hmm.